Hello everyone. This month, we're celebrating Hispanic and Latinx Heritage Month, which means many of our neighbors and friends in the greater Seattle area and across the nation will be celebrating and honoring the diverse tapestry of the Hispanic and Latinx communities. And the Y community will be celebrating right alongside them as our Hispanic and Latinx leaders welcome community through meaningful connection and discussion for the rest of the month long celebration. Leaders like our very own Liz Toledo, Chief Branch and Administrative Officer, who's been a part of the Y movement for over 30 years. Liz, welcome. Thank you. We're so glad you're here. You joined us earlier this year in January, and we already see and feel your handprint on our association and our community. We're so glad you're here. Thank you, Laria. So when we think about the label uh, for the Heritage Month, Latinx and Hispanic Heritage Month, that feels like a bit of a over oversimplification putting a lot of labels under a very um, broad umbrella. Could you share some thoughts about that oversimplification? You know, when you, over, when you use labels that, by the way, were constructed here in the United States, it's not part of the countries that all of the, the diverse people come from. Um, and that really goes back to even the U.S. Census. They yeah. were the ones who created the labels. Mm. Um, we don't use those labels in our in our own respective countries. Mm. But you're also taking away the rich cultures that each individual country um, has. So when you lump us all together, it makes it easier for the person that is, uh, d you know, talking about us. But it doesn't give us the the respect for the individual cultures mm. that come along with that. Wow. Thank you, thank you for that. So what are we gonna do about it? And how are we pulling in this conversation around labels into Heritage Month? Interesting, the uh, ERG that the YMCA has, the Latino and, and, Heritage, and Hispanic uh, ERG, what they're doing is that they're focusing on labels so that we wanna kinda reclaim it and redefine it so that people understand what the definitions are between uh, different groups so that you're not we're not seen all as one when we're all a very you know beautiful rainbow of different cultures and different um, even foods that we don't talk about when we lump all of them together mm -hmm. so that's going to be the concentration this year oh I'm looking forward to it especially the food part <laughs> you mentioned the census which is one place where labels are used uh, to identify uh, a broad diversity of um, Latinx, Hispanic uh, individuals. Are there other systems where labels are used uh, in a way that, that um, perpetuates inequity and maybe even causes harm uh, within the community? Could you talk a little bit about that? The inequity and the disparities that are created when you kind of group everyone together doesn't take into account what each group needs in terms of, uh, you know, when it comes to health care. Do some of their Spanish-speaking uh, Latinos, they're non-Spanish-speaking Latinos. So, you know, you may need a translator, you might not need a translator. Um, it even spills into our education when we talk, when we put children into uh, uh, what they call English-speaking classes mm. so that they're not allowed, you know, to speak their own native language and what does that take away from their culture. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many different things that, again, what is needed for each group is so different mm -hmm. that you can't group them all together in order to best meet the needs of that individual. Our communities are so diverse that I'd like to take this opportunity to share other perspectives. Hello, uh, my name is Fernanda. I was born and raised in Brazil. I moved to Florida when I was about 14 years old, so finishing uh, middle school, entering high school. Uh, that was the first time that I got to experience different cultures. Uh, when I arrived in Orlando, I didn't know how to speak English, so that was very, very difficult for me. Uh, most often, I felt like I was an outcast and uh, I wasn't uh, feeling like I belonged. Uh, so then I started looking for my community, uh, somewhere where I could express myself and be myself. Uh, being part of the Latinx community, which is huge in Orlando and in Florida in general, gave me a sense of belonging and acceptancy. 
uh, because I was born in Brazil, a former uh, Portuguese colony, I am considered to be part of the Latinx community and not Hispanic. Uh, the use of these labels serve the purpose of allowing the US government to categorize the change in population and to identify trends by shared culture. I will sometimes say that I am Latinx or Hispanic, uh, or I'll be more specific and just say that I'm Brazilian. Uh, between Hispanic and Latinx, I will tend to describe myself uh, as Latinx most. Uh, when wanting to express solidarity with other Latinx groups in the US, uh, Latinx is a gender neutral alternative to Latino. Uh, it equalizes men and women and also includes gender uh, non binary individuals. I prefer this term because it creates inclusivity. Uh, group labels are misleading and they don't give us the full picture. Some, someone that identifies as a middle class Latinx female has a different experience uh, from someone that identifies as female Latina working mother. So that is very important to recognize these unique identities. Hi there, I'm Kenzie. Um, so I'm actually half Hispanic. I'm a quarter Guatemalan. My mom's actually from Guatemala. Um, and I identify with my Hispanic culture um, or Latinx culture. And I have um, been a huge advocate as a mixed person to talk about how my personal, um, how I deal with um, people being rude to me about being mixed um, and not being Hispanic enough um, is very harmful. And I wish we can talk more about that. The word Latino is often used to identify me and I sometimes remember to say actually I prefer Mexican-American. I don't always remember to say that, but that's okay. You don't have to label me at all. You can just call me by my first name, Rene. I'm the daughter of an immigrant and I'm also first generation Mexican-American. I'm also part of a native family from the parts of the United States that used to belong to the indigenous peoples of Mexico. When I think of Hispanic and Latinx Heritage Month, I really think about those intersections of who I am and wonder where I really belong within those labels. After all, I can think of a couple of instances in which I'm forced to choose. One of those examples would be those lovely ethnicity and race forms where we check off who we are. Am I Hispanic and Latina? Check. Am I native? Yeah. Can I select both on a lot of those forms? No. And that always makes me wonder, what effect does that have on the data that we're collecting? How does that really capture our intersections and our needs and who we are as a community if we're not able to really recognize that diversity that each of us holds. As we honor our heritage and culture this month and every day, we hope that we find ways to redefine these labels and disrupt harmful systems. Thank you to our Y colleagues for sharing in this important topic. Explore resources and upcoming events provided and hosted by the Hispanic and Latinx Y employees. And find out more about this year's theme at our upcoming Y Community Conversations with expert panelists from the Hispanic and Latinx community as they navigate labels and how they can cause harm. In this conversation, our panelists will envision a way forward that celebrates the full diaspora of the Hispanic and Latinx communities.